Hey everybody, welcome to Mindful Social, where we talk about using social media in a more maybe intelligent and mindful way and how we can do that. And we talk with people who actually maybe practice a little mindfulness in their lives, which is a good thing. And if you're not, you should be. This week, I've got Paul Bradley Smith, and we've been friends on social for some time, and we've never actually met in person, which is kind of common with this show. I'm not sure why that is, but I'm really happy to finally meet you face to face, Paul. Yeah. Why don't you tell people a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, yeah. So my name is Paul Bradley Smith, and um, I've been a blogger for for quite a while. Um, uh, my history uh, for going in, my background, I used to trade and then I did software sales for many years. And I was always more of a creative um, than, you know, kind of in that finance industry, you know, or everything. Anyway, so when social media came out um, and being able and blogging, I, I, I just I, I saw the opportunity, you know, immediately to, you know, begin expressing myself and you know, the analytics side, I've started doing, you know, case studies anyway. So that opened up opportunities to, you know, basically creating leads uh, for companies. I specialize with uh, small to uh, small business to uh, medium sized business hmm. uh, on the marketing side of uh, one of my clients. Uh, Raindrop Marketing is a premier uh, marketing agency right here in San Diego who uh, works with a lot of professional services, that sort of thing. Anyway, that's a little bit about about me and uh, you know how I got into blogging, and then I um, get, you know just kind of added you know all the other social channels and learned more about them. Mm, mm. So you spent a lot of time thinking about growth in particular. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when a, a while back when the economy, you know, being in sales as long as I have, when social media came around, I saw it as a, a, a barrier or a, a that I could break down to help generate leads, meaning from the standpoint, you can get closer and more intimate with, um, you know, your audiences. And in, in many cases, like a prime example is what I did is I incorporated my um, you know, basically in the be very beginning, I came to what my, my best skills were, you know, um, when I was kind of reinventing myself, you know, which was, you know, sa sales, being persistent, writing and photography and being creative. Mm. And so with that, you know, I, I, I started writing and I, I used like in Twitter, I use my quotes and that sort of thing to give away. And ironically, you know, you give those away and the, the, you know, stuff comes back, you know, like for what you're doing. And so I basically have become a dot connector between the people that want to do business and, and a lot of great companies that focus more on the human side of things. That's kind of a little bit more about what I'm doing now. I like that term dot connector. Cause I think that works really well on social, you know, that, really it's all about making those connections and how are we going to connect those dots between platforms, between people, between ideas, between business concepts. Exactly. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the whole point of social, right? It, it's about connecting mm -hmm. more than it's about that kind of, uh, uh, just random. I think, I guess where I'm going with this is, you know, when people think about growth marketing, a lot of times people think of spam. Yeah, and that's not necessarily what it is. And I'd love to hear what you think, you know, the difference is. Oh, most definitely. Um, and, you know, that that's a great question, because, you know, in spam, you know, a lot of a lot of times, um, you know, where people don't have it is that they're just sending out emails and they're just, you know, bombarding people on the Internet immediately when somebody likes you or follows you or that sort of thing without even getting to know people. And, you know, I've been in the forefront of, you know, kind of trying to break down that barrier because salespeople have a bad rep, you know, because first of all, it's hard to get in. And, you know, because of so many bad people in the past of spamming you, calling you at strange times, you know, all of that type of thing, you know, where you're like, I'm sorry, I'm not even thinking about this, you know, right. Dinner but, time. Um, <laughs> you know, with that, you know, you, the other flip side to that is if, you know, in business to business or human to human that, you know, I love how Brian, 
you know, really breaks it down to the human to human element of, you know, because really it's a human to human, but it's still a business transaction. Mm -hmm. And so where with that business transaction, um, getting in there and getting to know them a little bit more intimate online and um, a little bit more about them kind of it, 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 it breaks down that barrier to allow them to ask questions and feel more comfortable about disclosing budgets and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's really like what I do in my specialty because, you know, the sales aspect, like for raindrop, all I do is like, I basically hook the fish, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're interested, the, um, you know, they've reviewed me online and I only partner with really quality companies. And so, you know, like Raindrop and Nimble and, you know, a number of other um, great companies like Friendly Cruises and mm -hmm. you know, our landing a shopping center. But, uh, you know, I, I partner with them because they're they see the human elements of 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 that where you have like if you focus on the, the, the clients or person's experience, like even the introduction, mm -hmm. you, know, you can say that through the life cycle of the whole, you know, product beginning to end of the contract or beginning to end of the project. And if they have that experience, they'll, they're more apt to grow, you know, to answer your question, you know, by focusing on that and mo multiple touch points, you're, you can grow. Yeah, I think that's really important because, you know, a lot of people think, you know, they focus on on growth hacking, for example, which isn't, to, to my mind, isn't all completely bad because what it really is is finding ways to expand the speed of the growth of the network, but it has to be done in a, in a considered way rather yeah. than, you know, Hey, let's just add hundreds of thousands of likes to our Facebook page. You know, it, yeah. 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 How no, is that going to help us? <laughs> no, exactly. No kidding. You know, people ask me that all the time. They're like, you know, um, you know, I only have, you know, a few thousand Twitter followers, but like, you know, I, I only, those tw followers are like, you know, real, you know, people that like, have never gone out to, you know, you know what I mean, to gain all of that. Now, of course, like your online reputation is important, but what really matters is the substance within there. And it's not really, I don't think the size of the network versus like the actual like substance inside of who you're connecting with and who your community is and, um, and, and working with your community in, in everything. And um, that that's really, um, you know, I'm kind of at the forefront of that because I want to make sure that people have a better view of salespeople, really, because, you know, I understand. I mean, it's tough. You know, the the bottom line is a lot of businesses doesn't don't doesn't get done if there's not that persistence. There's there's a fine line between persistence and being super aggressive, like aggro. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. Being persistence, you know, I've had doctors, I deal with a lot of doctors, you know, I've been, they've thanked me for being persistent with them for months, you know, because, you know, they're so busy and they want it, you know, they want to do business, but like, anyway, it's a long so the story. Difference, the difference there really is, is that you're spending time with them as, as individuals, as Brian would say, humans, yeah. rather than, you know, focusing on them as targets, for yeah. example. Yeah. So how do we differentiate that marketing? If you're going into a new market, um, you know, traditionally salespeople knew so much about who the potential client was and how the product applied to them. But now when we're looking at a much larger scale with global marketing, yeah. how do we nail down, um, you know, who those avatars, personas, whatever you want to call them. How do we nail down who those actual people are? Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's, that's a great, great point um, in doing that. And so one of the things um, I'll tell you, one of the best things that ever came is that Brian introduced me to John Ferrara. Of, of mm -hmm. Nimble. Yeah. And Nimble, you know, really has helped with the insights of that because you know, when you're out there and, and being a lead generator where you are, you're, I'm dealing with so many different, you know, like, obviously I have various verticals that you go after to grow those. And, and when you start engaging with those people on Twitter, on, you know, all those other things, and just not only just the facets of what you're talking about, but if you mm -hmm. can somehow 
change that into like an engagement. And it, do, it doesn't even have to be about what, you know, you're actually talking to them about, you know, because it breaks that down. And then it, that human element, they want to do business with you or they want to learn more about you. And, you know, you asked a great question. How do you differentiate in that and go in and go after like new verticals? Um, a lot of times, you know, going in and, and, and really trying to build the relationships with influencers inside that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, inside there. So they, um, you know, once you have, are, are, are engaging with those influencers, those influencers stimulate the growth and, and, and leads come in that way. Um, I have a lot of leads now that come in, you know, via electronic or even LinkedIn now that like people are like, oh, well, I've known about your personal brand and, you know, we need a, a website or something like that. And I know, you know, a lot of people, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they're coming through me and not even knowing the other brands that I work with. But anyway, that's, that kind of gives you a little bit about that. Um, and that's part of being a dot connector really. And, and that, you know, even if it isn't something that you personally do, you can connect them to people who do that. Exactly. And that's really what I do. Like if you looked at the knit and gritty of my brand and everything, it's like, I've, I've got a lot of different, um, you know, connections, you know, I've been mm -hmm. blessed with a lot of really, really wonderful people. And I'm very humbled to, to be, you know, part of, of such an amazing community and, and comes with that comes responsibilities in, you know, the things that, you know, you do. Um, and, uh, um, but, you know, it's, I, I remember, you know, Dory Clark's book, Reinventing You, um, mm. was a huge help in, um, in a lot of uh, my help initially, along with Kari Anderson, you know, she's wonderful. She's helped me so much with, you know, my speed, just, you know, keeping things simple and concise and concrete and, mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I have a lot of thanks to, to those. <laughs> well, Rachel in the audience says, uh, Rachel Miller says, it's the difference in between doing social and being social. Yes. Kind of like doing mindful things or being mindful. Always spotting the difference isn't rocket science. And Rachel is one of those people who really gets it. Yes, that's so, that's so true. You know, I tell people in companies this all the time because their idea of social is posting, you know, or mm -hmm. posting something about them. And I go, you know, it's so ironic. Some of the best things that have ever happened to me haven't even been from the, the you know, like I've had plastic surgeons. Sell, sell, sell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've had like plastic surgeons come through my Instagram from a, 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 a photo that I took. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then finding, you know, it, it's so different instead of, you know, it's subliminal, you know, like, oh, okay. Oh, wow. He's a marketeer, you know, or anyway. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's a really important part about social media. That's very different than the way traditional media has been that, you know, they are all about the end goal and social itself is really so much more tangential. It's about, you know, what else do people do that are interested in your product, your services, your brand, what else is interesting to them? And often their passion isn't necessarily your brand. Hello. Yeah. So, you know, what do you, what can you find that's interesting to them around that? Exactly. How can you get them engaged? Yeah. Um, people do business with people that they like, you know, I mean, seriously, I ran across this all the time, you know, in other products that have far superior, I always wondered this when you have a product or service, may, I've mainly been in ser uh, services and intellectual property, you know, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. in the sales aspects, but it could go back to any widget or anything. And that is that if you have an amazing product or widget, but the experience with that widget, you know, it works and functions and everything, but the experience, the human experience along the way was horrible. You will always remember mm -hmm that experience that you had even though the uh whatever you purchased is of high quality you see what i'm saying and, yeah. and and you could use it as okay you know in a really nice watch for example of a brand and if you had to bring that thing in many 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 times and just the people were rude and that and e even though that the company honored everything you didn't have to 
pay for anything. There was no outflow. But if all, all along there, those, those people aren't treating you well, they're not going to come back. And that's really what it functions to is that, you know, it, it's about treating others as you'd like to be treated. And, you know, really, um, you know, yeah, exactly. Treating others as you like to be treated. And, mm -hmm. um, I, and it takes so little to turn that around. You know, if somebody had a bad experience, you know, that's going to going to make them really unhappy. But then if you came back and said, wow, you know, I'm really sorry. I was having a bad day. People will accept that. Yeah. You know, they'll if if you apologize or you humanize the interaction. So true. You know, I mean, you no matter we're all human and we all mess up and we're all I mean, I am far from perfect. Just ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Gail says, we are all human. I'll yeah. uh, tell you Rachel. everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Rachel says it's transmedia. All your social posts are inside into you personally and professionally, and it's all your story. You're guiding folks through an experience you control whether you realize it or not. And, you know, that's that's incredibly true. And I know that's been one of the things that's attracted me to your po your posts, Paul, Thanks. is that, you know, you come across as somebody I'd like to know. Yeah. And who doesn't want to work with somebody they'd like to know? <laughs> I know. Thanks. I, I, I feel honored and humbled to be on your show. Like, this is awesome. Like, uh, really cool. I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, no, it, it, I, it, it I, is. It, it was, it's really exciting. And, um, I appreciate it. And I love being around all the people that, you know, like yourself and that feel the same way about, you know, people, you know, it's like, you know, the other part of what you wanted to talk about was entrepreneurship and, mm -hmm. you know, the knit and gritty of it is it's tough in today's times, you know, and, you know, I'm a main supporter of a family and you've got to be like, uh, you know, you've got to work really, really hard. And um, the, you know, persistence has been one of the, 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 the things that have got has gotten me through, you know, those things. And I still go through things every now and then, you know, I'll go through uh, for unforsakable circumstances, you know, a client um, loves me or whatever, and something sold or something, you know what I'm saying? And so you have these changes mm -hmm. and you, you know, as an entrepreneur, you have to adapt to those changes and look, look at as those opportunities as opportunities versus like, um, oh, hindrances, you know, from the standpoint right. of, um, oh man, I just got here and now, you know, here and it's like, oh, okay. Now I have to take the escalator, <laughs> the escalator back down and then go up again. Yeah. You know? And you're like, and, but it, you know, that's, those are the, 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 the cycles of being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my advice for anyone, you know, out there is, you know, and I got this from Dory's books, but like really, uh, um, dig in and find out what it you are so good at that other people, you know, I don't care what it is, you know, and that's kind of what I did. I'm so good at meeting people and doing an intro that that's kind of how I ended up as a growth executive really, or creating mm -hmm. what that is, is that, um, you know, when you do that and become so good at something, um, you know, others, you know, will want to be around or, you know what I'm saying? Like you just, you love it. So you do it. And, um, anyway, I think, I think, I think most successful, successful I'm getting, getting angry. Angry. no, I, I actually, that's me. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I think most successful entrepreneurs are successful because they have so much passion for what they do that it can carry them through, that roller coaster ride. And, yeah. you know, yeah, there is a lot of depression. There's a lot of really difficult times, but their passion for what they do carries them through. And, and slowly, you know, how on some roller coasters, you're like, can we ever get to the top of this yeah. hill? I know. And, you you know? Get there and then something <laughs> happens, you know, it's like, oh, and you're like man, I got there. Okay. Well, <laughs> You know, but it's like that. That's the that's the cycle of, of of that. And you know, just partnering with good people. You know that that's huge. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because you know that can lead to other opportunities as well. You know, like just um, you know multiply, um, and uh, 
but yeah, that you know, entrepreneurship is not a, an easy an, an easy game. Um, no. Sure. But. Uh, cool. But it really is. Uh, you know, you gotta kind of like the ride, oh. and after a while, you get kind of kind of used to it. But I think something that you brought up earlier is is also really true that. You know, it's about your network yeah. and whether it's a personal face to face network or yeah. it's a virtual network, knowing that you have support systems, knowing that you have people that you can turn to, yeah. even if it's just to answer questions. Uh, you know, that's that's what really has changed for entrepreneurs, I think, that our networks are bigger and we have access to people who maybe in you know the real world we wouldn't even get to talk to. Yeah. But, you know, you get to meet people through digital means uh, they're like wow i can you know yeah. tap into ted rubin yeah oh, i know <laughs> Ask exactly. question no no kidding it's that it's 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 awesome you know i you know kari with my um kari and i've been really close for a long time and you know mm. he writes and 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 uh, about a lot of things where being like that social where your connectedness i think you know people tell me all the time how can you become more intimate online? You know what I'm saying? And I'm mm. like, man, I'll tell you what now, if, as I've communicated with all these people, I feel more intimate with, with them than I do. Like if I just go meet somebody at a random party and they have a lot of commonalities with me, even if they like, let's say they did all like to do all the things that I do, you know, golf and this and that. And yeah, we, we hit it off. Mm -hmm. uh, I still don't find that, you know, in that connectedness that you get from the social of, of, of doing that for, for, for a number of years when you're, you know, connecting socially. And mm -hmm. so with that, you know, that connectiveness, um, you know, just multiplies those opportunities in so many different ways, you know? Yeah, it does. And I think that, you know, in some ways, we know more about the lives of our social connections, our digital social connections, then we do somebody we meet at a networking meeting, the ice is already broken. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I go to conferences and, and some of my cohorts there, I'm like, oh my gosh, how's your dog? You yeah. know, all of those, those little things that we know make it more personal, make it easier for us to connect. It makes it easier for us to be, you know, mindful of what their place might be right now because we know about what's going on in their lives. Yeah. So when we're doing that with, you know, our own social cohorts and other marketers and other salespeople, that's really great. But when you're doing that with customers or potential clients, um, particularly in B2B, which is always interesting, um, how do we deal with those relationships so that they're not too personal, so that they're not too invasive. We don't want people to think we're stalking them, even though we kind of are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's really true. That um, you know that, and 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 that, like I said, that's a, there's a fine line in that, and um, and and that's kind of a skill I have. Like you know, you can there's some people that can be really you know, I mean, I mean they they get mad, you know, and um, then again, you know, a prime example is I've had contracts closed by people that told me you know hung up on me you know what i'm saying you know, mm -hmm. eventually they come back and they're like you know i if it wasn't for you being so persistent we thank you for that and you know like initially you know like they hung up they didn't want to talk you know right and and, and you know i think that's it is like i always approach it as the human side of things you know where like you know, it's like, hey, we're all in this together. You know what I'm saying? What mm -hmm. I have to do is 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 to show you is will will add value. You know, and and uh, you know, it's you know, it's a tough world out there. That's for sure. And you do, there is a fine line between being really pesty, and um, you know, I always ask them if I've uh, you know that uh, you know if I've crossed the line. You know, if if you know like after when they answer and you can kind of see that um and then a lot of times that like just breaks that the, the ice even for oh no you're just really really good at what you do you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying and then then it's like okay well let's talk or whatever anyway those are the things there is a fine line that and you don't want to spam you know 
I think we get bombarded by emails so much. You know, I get, I, I look yeah. at my emails. I'm like, wow. Like, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a lot and it's not just emails, but you know, all those other facets of, of, well, that's an interesting thing that I've noticed lately in email lists in particular, um, you know, different lists that I subscribe to every once in a while, if I haven't opened them in a while, they'll come back and go, do you still care about what we have to say here? Or they'll say, you know, we, we haven't seen you in a while. Do you want to unsubscribe? Those little touches, even though I know they're automated, still kind of give me a little warm and fuzzy that oh, they actually no, do. that is true and i'm not a, a, against you know email mark i mean email marketing is really really good in a lot of ways and especially you know when you know people have subscribed and i think you know that's the whole thing of you know like the combination of being social plus that is where you're just so you, you basically become ubiquitous you know mm -hmm both your personal brand as well as your, you know, the, the partners you work with. Um, and that ubiquity, you know, helps in that sense because, you know, nine times out of 10, you know, it as well as it is purchasing decisions all come down to timing. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. You bet you buy a cruise, you buy anything. And especially, if it's a larger ticket item, <laughs> you know, in marketing, where marketing is a good part portion of what small businesses should be spending dollars on. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, it, you know, it, 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 a lot of it's timing on everything. And so with timing, you know, in dealing with the d development of that, you need to have a blanket to a lot of audiences for what you're what you're looking for you know like in your either your influencers plus either mm -hmm. people that would would tend to do business with you one of the things that i hear a lot from entrepreneurs is you know i'm too busy for this social media stuff <laughs> and i think one of the things that i i like to come back with right away is you don't have to be on all of the social networks yeah so can we talk a little bit about how you decide what social networks you're going to be on and where you're going to divide your time, oh, um, great you know, from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Yeah, that's awesome. I love, uh, this is a great point. I, I personally don't automate, you know, my personal stuff. I mean, obviously some businesses, are more automated like that. but the, the uh, automation, the more you engage, first of all, you want to find that the, the, the social channels that everything is, it, it has its purpose. You know, that's the, the whole thing is that, you know, people want to go out and do everything. And it's like, okay, well, you got to concentrate on what, uh, what's great. Prime example in business to business or human to human. You know, I love Brian's concept, human to human. So I'll just use that human to human transactions. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, you know, they're, you know, basically, you know, you're going to, um, they're going to be making that decision. Can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. I just, I, I had this great. Really just how do we decide, uh, as an entrepreneur, a busy entrepreneur, how yeah, do we yeah. decide what networks we're going to use on use and how much time we're going to spend on them and how much time. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I bring down to, like two or three to where I can concentrate those efforts uh, yeah. in, in the, uh, you know, prime example <clears throat> in human, this is where I was going, human to human transactions. A lot of that's done like LinkedIn is a big part of what I do in, if I'm looking out after a new vertical or that sort of thing, Twitter is also humongous. Mm -hmm. I use tw Twitter is, Basically, I'll go to somebody if I want to if I want to learn or link learn about them. Um, I'll go on and I'll 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 look at their LinkedIn profile because if they're any active on LinkedIn, they'll know and they'll look and see that people are looking at them. You know, so that's right. like the first touch point. You know, and then you know, and, and and decipher and you you need to find what your social you know what what works best you know for you because every social channel is different if mm -hmm. you're more into like 
you know, clothing and have goods and that sort of thing. Your Pinterest and, you know, your, your imagery, you know, Instagram is better. So I find Instagram very, very good. Like I would rate my top three, um, you know, like for like specifically for business development in, in that would be LinkedIn, Twitter for sure. Um, and then, and then probably even, um, Instagram after that. And then Facebook is always awesome for the conversations in the mm -hmm. event. way different uh, dialogue. That's for people that you're already connected with. Um, you're, you know, you know, you're not looking like in the new aspects, those, those three for me have been the best thing. And, and I concentrate in those areas, you know, mm -hmm. Twitter, I'm a heavy user of Twitter. And yeah, I me too. Um, I really do love Twitter. It's it, it, it's by far, I think, one of the best um, tools for it's like a virtual business card, you know, mm -hmm. like globally, you know, that that, you know, it, that you can say and I being writer, like even short sentences, I just I, I really love Twitter. Anyway, once you once you have blogged a little bit and you've been on Twitter for a little bit, you become much more concise in what you try to get across because you don't yeah. have any choice. Yeah, you don't have any choice. And I, I, I love it the way it feeds to you through, you know, your, you know, mobile, everything. I love that mm -hmm. about it. Facebook is awesome too, but it's just for a different thing. It's like after you've already done, they're part of your group and you have conversations and kind of like mm -hmm. a, a more of a, that would be the difference. Twitter, here's the difference in a business development world. Twitter's awesome for the initial, like if you're a hunter, like salespeople are like, you're either a hunter or a gatherer, you know, like that type <laughs> yeah. of thing. Is that if I was a larger corporation, I'd separate out like what used I would you know use for the hunters. I would be having them use Twitter, and mm -hmm. then um, on the um, you know on the uh, gathering side of things where people are might be clients and not you know in part of the community, you know when you're you know doing that um, you know that them using Facebook um, right. so would be more you know. Uh, um, advantageous but anyway that's that's kind of i think you just find two or three i i like everybody don't have a lot of time you know sometimes i go blank for a while you know like i haven't been very active lately just because i've been focused on other things but you know i try to stay active and that sort of thing yeah yeah and, and rachel says everyone should be on linkedin and then i recommend two others based on your communication preferences and i love this are you visual then use Instagram? Are you concise and love fast paced conversation? That's Twitter. Yeah. And she's a fan of automation. When done right, it solicits conversations with people you want to talk to and frees up your availability for real time engagement. Yeah. And I totally agree with that. I mean, yeah. I do schedule quite a lot actually. That, um, that I do agree. I'm just saying for my own personal, like, like mm -hmm. clients and stuff um, I've done, I just haven't done, you know, I, I, I do agree in, having a, a, a various amount of, of automation and especially where automation can be helpful is in your target, you know, like hashtags, uh, those sort of thing in, in, in really, um, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like in those groups of, of distributing the content. Um, and so yes, automation. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, for things like this, for the blog post, I use co-schedule and yeah. I have it sent out, you know, reminders to people so that I don't forget because I'll forget. And those little little timed things are really important to get out yeah. there. Yeah. And combining both, meaning like, you know, for both that, that, you know, then you have the engagement online. What I meant mainly is like where if you're all automated, this is yeah. let me explain the, the, this is where I'm going. If you're all automated and that's all you're doing, <laughs> okay, this is the caveat. Then you know you're just going to see a bunch of posts and and very few people engaging. If you're more engaging and then have the automation too, but you're more, spend more time engaging, then you'll see. You know that's that's the caveat. I I do. Yeah. I see a lot of, of great points for automation. Yeah, I I agree, and I think you know if if all you're doing is automating and you're not engaging and you're not responding, then why should we care about you? And yeah. you still have to go in and look for things to retweet or participate in a Twitter chat or comment on a LinkedIn blog post. Those kind of engagements you can free up a lot of time by doing a little automation. Yeah, 
in advance. And that brings up a great point. This is actually, this is a, a need um, in one of my clients actually that I've helped out and I've gone through this and I personally can attest to this because uh, same things happen to me. And that is that a lot of people will go out and they'll become so social and engage in everything, but then there's no business that comes in. <laughs> yeah. And so, so yeah. here's, this is where I see things a lot different, you know, like being a salesperson in the standpoint of like, I, 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 I'm really a salesperson that thinks like a marketer, but like it, 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 the sales side of me says, this is what you need to do. That's when you, when you take everything and you focus down to who are you going, like, where are you going after? Like what, what are you targeting? And you know, when that happens, I put him on this thing where he made calls Bottom line is business to business or, and, and human to human. You have to call. That's another form of being human. That voice, you know, inflection um, helps out a lot aside from just seeing everything and either, either or engaging. And just mm -hmm. the mere fact of, you know, I brought him over the hump of saying, look, you know, just ask him for a meeting, you know, 20 minutes. You know, you've engaged with them a while. They're not, you know, and I think that's where a lot of people have, you know, that's the dichotomy is that, you know, they're, they're going to go out there and they think miraculously, a lot of businesses do this, especially small businesses, where they're, they, they're think, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go spend this money. Business is just going to automatically come in. Yeah, and like manna from heaven. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't it, happen. It doesn't <laughs> happen. Even if yeah. you're really, you know, you know, I guess in to the consumer, like if you're marketing a widget, it might be because you're across a broad audience where it might change, you know, that. But only if they just trip over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But when you're dealing with larger ticket items like me, like you have to get them on the phone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's what it is. And just asking them that. And if you've done everything right from the beginning of all doing that, you'll break down all those barriers and it will literally be just like, okay, when, when on the calendar, just like you pin me down of saying right. hey, 28th, uh, 25th of October, you're, you're, you're coming. Anyway, that's, yeah. that's just well, it, sense. Cause you know, uh, that happens a lot people and then they get business. They're like, I don't know what to do, but my bank account's not full, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you're like, okay, condense all that down into focus focus on those. And that's where nimble has helped me out so much. You know, I talk about nimble all the time. Mm. You know, there's another thing for people that like to use Twitter that I've used with nimble that is just amazing. And that is on your Twitter lists. You can export your Twitter lists to, to, to nimble that creates that contact. Mm -hmm. So like, as you go through your multiple forms of contact, if you're contacting them through, through, through Twitter, and then all of a sudden you want to take it to the next level, then you just build that up, engage with them. And then next thing you know, you have their cell phone and their email. And then next thing you know, you, you're marketing it and you're putting it into. Some people would say that's creepy. Yeah, <laughs> that is creepy. You know, but, but I do use it. So, okay. you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just saying, you know, some people would say it's creepy. I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing well, it. Purpose. Here's the thing. If I've had a number of social conversations with you on some platform, any of the platforms, I have people all the time that then find my phone number and just pick up the phone and call me. Well, my phone number is on my website, but we already have a relationship. We've already had conversations. So it's a lot easier. Yeah. You know, I think people say, oh, Twitter's useful, useless. And I say, no, it isn't. It's a great conversation starter it's just not where you close the deal exactly that is so true it's a conversation starter it's mm -hmm. the it's the beginning of the dot connector meaning like okay now i can see how this person what their content what they're doing oh yeah they'd be great for this you know mm -hmm. or that or whatever you know and 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 getting to know them, and then you get to know them a little bit more and um, next thing you know, you're 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 doing business, or you're. Partner. And it's not a cold call anymore. And who doesn't hate cold calls? Oh, I hate yeah. cold calls so much. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, you know, and the lo the longer you do this, the less it's all cold. I I mm -hmm. rarely get, you know, 
nobody hangs up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I remember back, you know, a long time ago when, when all that came to be and, you know, you'd get hung up on and this and that. And yeah. not rarely, that's the other thing with the social media. It, it, it breaks down all those barriers and you have more warm calls. And you know what? I, be straight. You know, I can take it. You know, like mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's, it's like if that's not your cup of tea, it's not your cup of tea. And, um, you know, that's, that's the thing. And, um, and I think that if you go about it, you know, just treating them and connecting with them, whether they do business with you or not, they could eventually, you know, I like to look at it as people that haven't done business with us. I think the best thing in the world is when you get a referral from them. Exactly. Yeah. And yourself from the beginning and they didn't either have budget or it wasn't their time or anything. And they send you over a referral. And you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. I didn't even do business with them. They sent me a referral, you know, you know, you know, and you're like, okay, that's great. But, uh, well, and that's like you were saying before being a dot connector, that's part of the deal, you know, is that maybe you don't know, you don't know, need that product yourself, but you know, somebody who does and that relationship, you're willing to go, oh yeah, you know, and, um, I think that's some of the things that Kari Anderson's really brilliant at it, making those connections and helping people understand that that's what it's really all about. It's not, you know, sell, sell, sell. It's about connect, connect, connect. Connected. Yeah. yeah. That, and I looked at the, that, you know, what's interesting. I got to tell you a funny story. You guys will love this. Um, when I, I went during when the economy, this was before I started blogging. So this would have been a back, in like oh six maybe oh seven it was right when all that mess happened in the stock market and this mm. and that and I was working up in I, I won't name company names or anything but I can tell you the story of this um <laughs> and I was up in Orange County and I was like hey guys this is like I was an early adopter to LinkedIn I'm like I have this brilliant idea you know that um instead of like being invasive of you know, millions of cold calls or whatnot, you know, let's connect with, you know, this is before a lot of this stuff. Let's connect with the people that we're trying to do through LinkedIn Hmm. and kind of converse with them. And they thought it was the worst idea ever. And they were (laughs) older mind, you know, and they they were like, that's nothing's ever happened with that, you know? And I look at it years later, I'm like, gosh, that's the single best thing for me. (laughs) You know what I mean? That's like when you find those inventions on TV and you're like, I thought of that five years ago. Yeah. Because I was thinking <laughs> about that years before, just like, right. like, Brian, like Brian's brand and human to human. I've always felt that way. Mm-hmm. And like internally, like, I'm just like, gosh, these people like come, you know, to you and you're just like, uh, and, and I think that's why it resonates so well with so many people, you know, is that, that we do. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the right thing right there. Yeah, no, totally. It, it, it is. And, uh, you know, so, but yeah, they, um, you have any other questions or. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's been really, it's been really fun chatting yeah. with you. And I think, you know, what I'd like to do is, is let people know where they can find you and particularly your blog. Cause I really had fun reading through that, uh, you know, before we started the show and, and, uh, looking at some of the things you've got to say. So please let people know where they can find you. Yeah, paulbradleysmith.com or um, I love Twitter, Tweetsmithers um, is, you know, and, and I bought that domain name. So I'm social.connector.com as mm-hmm. well as smithers.com. It all goes to my personal brand. And, um, you know, I work with uh, um, an amazing, my client Raindrop Marketing too is an amazing company and, um, you know, anyone out there looking for web stuff and, you know, that type of thing, they're, they're, they're a great, great, great firm. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they focus on the client experience and that's what really drew, drew me to them. But anyway, that's, that's another, another, that's where you can find me and my clients too. But, great. Uh, well, thank you, Paul. I, I really appreciate you being on the show and, and I want to let people know that this will be on YouTube and it'll be on my podcast on Spreaker, and you can also find the archive on the website, mindfulsocialmarketing.com. Excellent. So uh, I Thank really you appreciate so your time. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And man, we got it down today. Let, to the, 
<laughs> I mean, right as it as as it as it came in, and that was my fault. I had a number of different windows open. I should have closed out everything. So you know, technical issues are just part of the web. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they handled it great, didn't we? Awesome. We did. I love. And it. Thanks everybody for for joining us today, and I hope you will tune in next week as well for mindful social chat. I will. I'll see you. See you soon. Have a great time, you guys. Have a great day. No, no, no. Thank <laughs> you.